So you're now in a build stage at the moment. And what does a typical week of training look like for you? Um, well, I normally it's it's quite big mileage, quite high mileage. So I I actually train twice a day the whole year round. Um, but in this period, it's a bit slower runs, uh, but a bit higher mileage. So typically a Monday would be like uh, two easy runs, let's say 10K or 45 minutes. Um, or one a bit longer, let's say like 15 or an hour, 15K or an hour, and the second one a bit shorter, like half an hour. Uh, and that includes like a strength session after the half hour run um, to do some that, like strengthening. Uh, Tuesday is typically kind of a fart leg session, so some interval um, and like a second easy run. Wednesday is for me usually kind of a long runish day so it would be like uh, 20k or like 80 minutes 90 minutes uh then the afternoon we usually have off thursday is a bit uh threshold i don't know if that's like for some people that might sound like a weird term uh it's a bit you run at a pace that you don't have to push too hard but you stay under a certain threshold uh i will not go into the the real like background on that but it's it's more of a steady run uh, pace. Uh, and then Fridays is a bit similar to Monday. So like easy running and um, some strength and conditioning. And Saturdays is hills, hill sprints. And Sunday is another long run. So that's a bit the typical structure. But I have to say that the, the past period I've been a bit injured. So I came out of the track season with Agilis issues, uh, Agilis tendon issues. And now I've been trying to get back into my normal training routine again. But yeah. It's still a little bit adjusted. So I would do some things on the bike or maybe in the pool to get my training in, but not everything with the same impact on the body. What's the thinking behind doing two sessions a day? You know, is why do two 10K runs when you can just do one 20K run? Um, yeah, it's a good question. Sometimes I ask myself the same thing because <laughs> actually, <laughs> you, you have to like prepare yourself for two separate trainings, put on your shoes. It takes more time to do it in like in two runs than in one. But I think the impact on the body is way less if you do 10K. So I think everyone who's ever done a run uh, knows that the longer you run, the heavier it gets on the on the body. But say you would have a break after 10K, have some hours, uh, some hours to recover, and you would do another 10K, it might feel like a very easy day. So I think this is the reasoning behind it, to still get like the, the mileage in and to work a certain amount of time at a certain like cardio level, but not uh, impact the body too much. You touched on there that you had an Achilles tendon issue. What happened there? Um, well, for me, the track season was a bit of a track season with injuries in general. So I tore something close to my Achilles tendon in July. Uh, it was luckily just a small tear. So it only took me like about 10 to 12 days to get back into running. Um, and then I was in preparation for world championships uh, for Budapest. Uh, I think it was two weeks out and I think as an athlete you're always balancing a bit on the thin line not to get injured but to do enough training it's hard hard to find that balance and then especially in this last preparation before championship you start taking a little bit more risk the sessions become a bit harder you try to get everything a bit sharper uh, and I think I just overdid it so I had a travel day uh, to Paris where my coach is based and my training partners are based and then in the evening, so after the flight, I did a quite hard session on the track and something just snapped in my Achilles. It was not like a specific moment, but I felt it coming into the session. And yes, if you run often, you know, certain pains are all right to run with, but this one, it was pretty clear that was not going to be a, like something I could run with. So from there on, I just adjusted training for two weeks, tried to get as fit as possible towards uh, world champs. And be able to run there at least because the last two weeks i could barely run um so i managed to at least do that and finish the race but after that like the aftermath of taking all the painkillers and like uh like pushing the body to its real limit was was coming in it so since then it took me about four to six weeks to get back into a little bit normal running and you say you're constantly finding that fine line between training but then not overtraining or getting injured what sort of preemptive things are you doing to mitigate any injury 
Well, I think the basic training program is a very important part of it. So, and, and structure. So you basically prepare your body to have a certain strain every day. And I think that's something you have to build up. You cannot just go from never running to running like pros to like 150, 160 kilometers a week. Um, so I think that build up is very important. Uh, and then also the small details of the, the strength and conditioning. So I think for every athlete, it's very important to find out your own weaknesses. Uh, sometimes I get these questions on Instagram when I do like a, a Q and a or something and they ask me what are good exercises for runners, but actually it's very specific to the type of runner you are, the running style you have. Uh, I can give you the exercise that are helpful for me, but it doesn't mean they're helpful for you. Um, so I think it's very important to find out for you specifically, uh, what, what helps. And for me, it's been known that I like have. Uh, problems with my around my ankles around my feet I have weak feet I, I like I go through them a little bit when I run so I had to figure this out the hard way by getting some injuries and doing exercise to get rid of it and forgetting to do the exercise for a while getting the same injury again that's a bit the cycle we go in so I think a lot of pro athletes can attest to this that you get the same injuries or related injuries the whole time back just by like lacking the exercise is a bit and then overtraining it a little bit. So it is a, it's a, it is a bit of a balance, but I'm like, I'm sure that, um, the exercises and, uh, the continuing continuity, uh, is very important with that. And like the, the gradual build up as well. So when you did your Achilles tendon, you were coming in quite hot. You were obviously in really good shape then to have to then sit out for a couple of weeks, knowing that you're in such good shape. What sort of, how does that take its toll mentally on you? And then how did you get through that process without just losing your head that you're having to sit out half the season injured? Um, I think the first injury, I was very surprised with myself, the way I handled it mentally, because it's sometimes it's um, better to know, say, for example, a stress fracture. It's a pretty common injury for runners. Uh, but often once this is diagnosed, you know exactly how long it's going to take. There's always a set time, let's say six to eight weeks. It's not like this weird injury. You don't know what it is. You basically know what you're going to get. But when I get this small tear, like next to my Achilles uh, tendon, I didn't know how long it was going to take. And normally this gives me a lot of stress because you don't know what you're in for. Uh, I can, I can manage. If you tell me you have to train alternative for two weeks and do like biking, I can figure it out. I'll, I'll be fine. But if you don't know this. Usually it does my head in a little bit. Um, I don't know. I think I was in a very positive mood then, and I didn't feel the stress that much be because the pain itself while walking was not that bad. So I was not constantly reminded by the fact that I had an injury. Whereas if you have a injury that also in your daily life, like hinders you while you're maybe standing cooking or whatever, uh, from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed at night, uh, you get constantly reminded. I think that's when you get into this like down state and mentally it's getting hard. But for me, I didn't have much pain. So that's why I got through it pretty easy. And I also found a bit of a new love for biking outside. So I have a mountain bike. I barely used it the past few years, but I used it a lot those two weeks. Um, and I think I set challenges for myself in that way that, that helped me a lot to stay fit. Um, and what really helps is to actually... Um, make yourself a program as well for the bike. So what I used to do, <clears throat> I have a program for running, but the moment I got injured, I'd lost my program because I couldn't run anymore. And I would just wake up in the morning and be like, what am I going to do today? I would just <laughs> figure it out in the morning. What do I feel for? Am I going to the pool? But I think it works very well to also structure um, an alternative training week like that. So maybe Monday is an easy day, just go for an easy spin and some strength. And then on Tuesday, put a harder session in the pool or on the bike or on the cross train or whatever. Uh, that helped me a lot as well. Uh, but that was the first injury. The second injury was a bit tougher because I was in this last stage before Worlds. Um, and then you get stressed, especially when you look too much on Instagram. You see all these people all, like you have to race against in two weeks, doing crushing their workouts, saying they're in great shape. I know half, half of this is probably also people <laughs> struggling. But uh, that was a bit tough for me, uh, especially because I wasn't home. I was abroad, uh, so I wasn't really in my own like home gym and with my girlfriend at home, just like um, having that base. 
Uh, so that was a bit tougher, but it was also only two weeks till World Champs. And after World Champs, I didn't look any further. So I was like, I have to survive these two weeks, get make sure I'm as fit as I can be at the start line. Uh, and then after that, we'll see it. Uh, and then afterwards, I had this rest period, so I could let, let go of it a little bit as well. Uh, but since then, it's been going steadily. I think seeing the progress or like uh, taking a win, even though it's a very small win, that's very important because it, it drags you out of this negative mood you get into. Um, but also having a, a safe and, and good support team around you, I think. I remember with my first injury, I was at the track doing a workout just next to my house. Uh, and I'm lucky that my physiotherapist practice is like 200 meters from the, from the track. And I remember still standing with my spikes on, on the track, calling my physio. I said, I did something I need to see you. And I think 20 minutes later I saw him and it also gives peace for the body and for the mind to know, like to have a first insight of how long is it going to take. So I think that's, that's very important as well. I see a lot of athletes having a special weird injury they cannot figure it out and it, they stop at a certain point trying to figure out what they have whereas I think it's very important to have the diagnosis right because it gives uh, like it gives calm for the moment 